In this video, I will show you how to configure Azure IoT Hub and easily create a business application for a chosen use case. For example purposes, we will be adding and connecting air quality meter simulators running the Lightweight M2M protocol to both the Coyote IoT device management platform and Azure. I will also show you how to enable bi-directional communication between a device and the cloud using device twins. And then we will try to pass telemetry data to Azure and finally visualize this data using Power BI. Of course, to integrate Coyote IoT Device Management with Azure IoT Hub, you need to have an active Azure subscription as well as an active Coyote IoT Device Management account. Uh, I also want to talk a bit more about this air quality meter. This is not a real device, but a Java application based on Anjay Lightweight M2M SDK. And it starts by picking a random city, and then it draws the data from open weather map. To this data, it adds a bit of random data so that you can see changes in data readings later in Azure. To get the data from open weather map, you need to create a free account and download these API keys first. Uh, I also want to say that this tutorial is available in text at iotdevzone.avsystem.com, which is a nice place for all developers that want to learn more about AV system products from the technical side. Uh, to read more about the air quality meter, you can visit our GitHub page where you can find the source code as well as instructions on how to build uh, such a device simulator. Um, for example, these are the lightweight M2M resources that this device has, and this is how you can build it. Uh, we can run it locally or in Kubernetes. Uh, we have a Docker image of this device, and we will be using it to run it in Azure. Okay, let's start by finding IoT Hub in Azure. Uh, here we need to add a new IoT Hub. Uh, so choose a resource group, a region, and pick a name, avsystem-iot-hub, uh, click next, as everything is fine here, and we go to management. Uh, in the pricing and scale tier, we want to go with the standard tier, as we're going to be adding extra data from device twins to our messages. Uh, the rest looks fine, uh, although we can turn off the Defender for IoT as we're not going to need it for this presentation. And let's hit Next and Create. So you can see that the deployment is in progress. So while this is deploying, we can define the storage. Let's go to Storage Accounts and add a new account. Uh, we choose uh, the group again type in the storage account name. Um, let's make it AV system dash IOT dash hub dash storage, or let's make it without dashes. And choose the location. And the rest is all fine, so we can go ahead and create it. Once the deployments are complete, we can go to Coyote IoT Device Management, open the administration menu and choose extensions. Uh, you can see that there's an Azure IoT Hub window here. And if we click Setup, it's going to ask us for some data. Now, let's go to our storage account on Azure and click Access Keys in Settings. Click Show Keys and copy uh, first the uh, connection string and paste here. Then we go to our IoT Hub, click Shared Access Policies in Settings, click IoT Hub Owner, and here we copy connection string primary and paste it here. 
We can also enable automatic synchronization, which means that when you add a device to our IoT hub, it will automatically add itself to the Coyote IoT device management platform. Okay, now open our device inventory here and go to Azure. Click IoT devices in Explorer tab and let's add a new device. Uh, we're going to have to add a device ID. I'm going to copy this and paste it here. Actually, let's make a few of these. So we have six devices from zero to five. Now let's go to Coyote and sync it with the IoT hub so that we can see our devices in the Coyote IoT device management platform. Now you can see that our devices are not registered. In order to register them, uh, first we need to turn them on by running a specific command. Uh, if you don't want to do it using a command, you can just use a graphical user interface. Uh, I had the command prepared earlier. Uh, now, what do we have in this command? Uh, we have the group where we want devices to be deployed, uh, the name of the device, uh, the Docker image and environment variables such as device ID, server address, which points to the specific IoT IoT device management installation, uh, and a token that enables you to get the weather data. So let's hit enter and wait. Once it's done, we will get a JSON payload, which simply describes what we can see when we click on our device in the container instances. Now we can go back to Coyote and after hitting refresh, we will see that our device is now registered. Uh, if we click on it and go to the actions panel, uh, refresh the data model, we will see lightweight M2M objects in the objects panel. So uh, we have the temperature object and here you can see the temperature value. In the device object, we also have a model number which shows the name of the city it reads the temperature for. Uh, so let's check the weather there on the internet. We can see that right now it's seven degrees there. And if we hit refresh here, uh, we will see that it's a bit different, of course, as remember, we are adding a bit of random data on top of it to see the values changing. But you can see that it's about seven degrees here as well. Uh, there is also the air quality object. And if you can't see it, you need to use the add new lightweight M2M object definition button to add it as it is not a standard object available in the platform. Uh, now, when we go to our IoT hub, uh, let's find our device uh, and go to device twin, uh, where we can see all the data reported. So here is the name of the device. Uh, model name. Uh, although we don't have any value for 3303, which is temperature, and 3428, as these are telemetry data, which are not sent by device twin. Now, for example, the value 90 defines the value for lifetime. Uh, let's change it in the Coyote platform to 80. And when we refresh, we can see it also changed in Azure. Now let's try it the other way around and change it in device twin. Uh, this will be a bit more tricky. What you need to know is that properties in Azure are divided into two groups, reported and desired.
So we need to add the following nested structure with, uh, say, 45 as our desired lifetime value. Uh, we can do it manually or mm, simply copy the structure from the reported properties and just change the value from 80 to 45. After refreshing it, we can see in the reported properties that it changed to 45, and we can also see it changed in the Coyote IoT device management platform. Now let's go back to Coyote and um, see our devices in the device inventory. Um, as you can see, they are all running. So now we can uh, create a special group for them in the platform. Uh, so let's uh, let's name it root dot iot hub example dot air quality meter, and click add to new group. Um, confirm. Then let's go to group management. Uh, we can see that all our devices are here. So let's go to value tracking to set up observed values that we want to track. Now let's click add new, type in temperature one and choose uh, sensor value. Um, okay. Uh, now let's add observes to both uh, PM 2.5 and PM 10 air quality resources. So um, air quality 1, PM 10, okay, and air quality uh, 1, PM 2.5, and, and okay. Uh, now let's go to device inventory and pick a device to see if we are observing the right resources. Um, as you see, uh, everything works here just fine. You can go to objects as well and see that there is the temperature value and the air quality values. Um, so let's move to our IoT hub and check a few charts. Uh, in the IoT Hub, we can see that our devices are sending some messages to the cloud. Um, so now we have to ask ourselves what we want to do with these messages. So first order of business, let's add a routing in the message routing panel. Uh, let's choose events. Um, Pick a name, um, default route or uh, uh, event route. And uh, the rest is fine. Uh, now for the routing query. Uh, we're going to need a query that requests only temperature value and air quality uh, 2.5 p.m. and uh, 10 p.m. values. Uh, now when the routing is added, let's go to Enrich Messages to set up uh, location tracking for our devices. To do that, we need to read the latitude and longitude, as well as device ID value, which contains the name of the city where our air quality meter measures temperature. Uh, let's hit apply. And once it's finished, we need to create uh, stream analytics jobs, which will transfer these data to Power BI. So let's create a job here and pick a name. 
IV system dash IoT dash hub dash to dash Power BI. Um, select resource group. Uh, the rest looks fine, so let's hit create. Um, Once it's complete, let's go to our job and add a stream input. Uh, to do that, we need to come up with an input alias. Uh, for example, AV system dash IOT dash hub dash input. Um, pick a default group and um, uh, okay, we're we're done. Um, let's wait for it to finish. Now for output, we want to choose Power BI. Uh, so you're gonna have to log in. And after that, let's pick an output alias. Uh, let's make it AV system dash IOT dash hub dash output. Um, Choose workspace, dataset name, um, AV system IoT hub dataset, um, and the table name. Let's just call it data and, and hit save. Now, for the last thing, we're going to write a query. Uh, this query defines how we want to map our events from input to output. Uh, as you can see here, we are requesting all the values, uh, temperature, PM10, PM2.5, uh, latitude, longitude, and device ID. Uh, actually, uh, we need to change a few things here in this query. And uh, now that it's correct, let's run this. It's going to take a while, so we can go to our IoT hub in the meantime and see the charts again. As you can see, we have uh, much more messages right now. Uh, 108 messages a minute uh, because we have uh, six devices and each device sends values for three different parameters every 10 seconds. So six times six times three equals 108. Now let's go back to the analytics jobs and see how our job is performing. Uh, it's running right now. You can see that there is some data being transferred. Uh, okay, so let's go to Power BI. Uh, my workspace. Uh, and here you can see the data set we created. Uh, we can click edit and see our data. You can see here the format of our data. Uh, as you can see, this is identical to our query. Uh, so now let's create a report. Uh, let's pick data we want to visualize. Uh, for example, let's make a table and see the average values reported by our devices. Um, so we can see that there is minus one degree in Olonet and 30 degrees in Santa Branca. Uh, we can also add um, average PM 2.5 and PM 10 values and see uh, the air pollution in this in in these cities. Uh, 
Now let's make a heat map and throw these data on a map. Uh, let's pick latitude, uh, longitude, um, PM 2.5 average value, and see which city has the most polluted air. Now from our table, we can see that Quellus doesn't look good in this compartment. And on the map, there is a city somewhere in Portugal or Spain that also seems to be polluted. So uh, let's check if Quellus is the city we are looking at uh, on the map. Uh, yep, uh, city in Portugal, uh, right here. So it works. Uh, of course, we can refresh this data and it will change in real time. Uh, and that would be all for this video of the Coyote IoT device management integration with Azure IoT Hub. Thank you for listening.